Tracy, we're at 10 hours. All right, thanks, Sean. And I think I'll go ahead and get us started. Uh, so welcome everybody to the August 11th Hyperledger Technical Student Committee call. Uh, as you are all aware, two things that we must abide by on this call. The first is the antitrust policy notice that is currently being displayed on the screen. And the second is our code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. Uh, for announcements today, we have the standard Dev Weekly developer newsletter that goes out each Friday. If you have something you want to include in that newsletter, please leave a comment uh, for uh, consideration on that wiki page that is linked in our agenda. If there, um, I guess, is there any other announcements that anybody would like to make? All right, I will take that as a Bobby. I just wanted to remind people that the survey is still in the chat from last week. If you didn't get a chance to take it, it's only two minutes and the documentation effort would appreciate it. All right, thanks, Bobby. Any other announcements? All right, uh, so we do have two quarterly reports that came in last week. Uh, Hyperledger Aries and Hyperledger Indy. Um, I know I saw that Aries one has, I think, about three people who've had a chance to review that. I haven't uh, taken a look at the Indy one, but I'm sure it's probably about the same. So if you haven't had an opportunity to take a look at those, please do. Um, there's some really good stuff happening in both of those projects. Uh, any questions on those two reports for those who have had a chance to look at it? All right, uh, we do have the Aroha one that is due today, so hopefully we'll see that one coming in, and then the Bevel one that is due next week. Um, so we'll be looking forward to seeing those. Uh, as far as discussion items, I don't know of any specific TSC discussion items that we have today, but if anybody has anything, now is the time to bring it up so that we can talk through uh, that before we move to the task force discussion. Okay, so Dano, I think it is over to you for the task force discussion. All right, um, let me get my screen ready. So a few weeks ago, we went over the recommendations take one. Um, I spent most of the time sharing the details of it and we didn't get much of an opportunity to get um, participatory feedback from um, a lot of the people who are on the call or who may have seen it for the first time. So I first would like to open the floor if there's anybody that has any comments on it. And then if there's no general comments, we could talk about um, review the labs projects and review um, you know, if there's any other scoping limitations we wanna put on on the themes. And other than that, I don't think there's a whole lot more to do with this, with this uh, task force because um, you know, as our goals are to identify areas, identify the labs projects and other sources, and those are the main tasks. So we're we're basically there. Um, so open the floor. Any general comments about um, the findings that were presented a few weeks ago? Um, I know that in let me find my Discord. There is one question from Arun. Did the task force consider any projects in the metaverse space? Maybe have examples demonstrating how interop and identity solutions can work together to tie in virtual worlds to the real world. Um, anyone have comments on, on that question from Arun? Or does Arun want to speak to it? Sure. So um, this came up. As one of the questions, so um, two weeks ago, I, I don't yeah, probably last to last week on a weekend, I got a chance to attend a blockchain event in Bangalore. It was at a call where 
I could meet some of the people. It was a different meeting for me, different kind of setup where it was more from a public blockchain ecosystem, not from uh, enterprise world. Um, but I had some familiar faces there in that event where many of them were talking about uh, this particular topic. So uh, I, I introduced myself and then I say that I'm working within the Hyperledger ecosystem. But then the very first question that pops up is how relevant would Hyperledger move towards in the Web3 space when everybody moves towards, let's say, metaverse or in, in that kind of an area, right? So um, I think there is like two ways I could have responded. That one way is to just answer, be technical, be objective to the question or other way could be, okay, let's understand what's happening there. So I tended towards that approach where I tried to understand what's happening there and understand what's what's being, what's that ecosystem moving towards. So most of the problem statement that they brought up are already solved. It's not like a problem that um, that's not solved and under any of the project under Hyperledger. It's just that there is no such example. And unless we have people who can think uh, the same way, it's very hard to communicate these things out. And that's when, um, I mean, when you posted that question, it reminded me of, of this discussion and I had to uh, write it down, right? So that's the background of why this came up and okay. how it came up. Yeah, because when I look at the the, the, the metaversal stuff, um, I, I tend to agree that a lot of the technology is there to support it. You know, we just, the, the three rendering libraries are probably out of scope of Hyperledger, but the tools to link an NFT to the system should be, you know, something that could be done with, with, it, with Hyperledger tools. It should be a library that should be there to support. Um, I mean, a, a, a demo live, a demo application that, yeah, that's something that I didn't initially think about, um, that we might or may not want to do. That sounds more like something like a, uh, a project level, uh, might want to put their demo together, but it's, it's, it's a tough call, especially when we're talking about something like the metaversal thing where it's all, um, aggregates of multiple projects, you know, an aggregate demo. Kamalesh. So, uh. Adding to uh, Arun's point, so six months back, I met one company who was building a uh, metaverse platform on Hyperledger Fabric. So, so I think there are such projects are going on, but like Arun mentioned, there is no kind of people are talking about and sharing in the community what they are doing, they are doing with the Hyperledger. Uh, another thing like uh, 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 last to last week, uh, Julian Gordon, the VP SFS for Linus Foundation came to India. And uh, Julian and I met with the uh, Polygon vice president. So, and they have kind of shown interest to be kind of uh, collaborate with Hyperledger or like how they can maybe create the plugins for the cactus. Even I same same thing I mentioned in the uh, this wiki page. Like, uh, so how we can involve the other communities or whether create some collaboration or uh, uh, maybe also talk the language of like how the people are talking about the web three in the public blockchain space. Mm -hmm. So I think, okay. that yeah. And, and I think it is sorry, it is still like, uh, uh, when like some, if someone is building on the tokenization, so always the, if like, for example, if a technology person consulting them, so it's very hard to convince someone to, create a token tokenomics on a hyperledger best projects instead of on the any public blockchain so like recently one of my customer is building some kind of agriculture uh, tokenomics to uh, nft platform kind of thing like line of kind of farm land tokenized and then what are the crops in farm uh, produce on the on the farm is attached to that uh, token so this kind of thing and the he is considering to use the hyperledger fabric but now suppose when we are consulting those kind of customer, so if you don't have such kind of stories or some kind of like, for example, like wallet, for example, like uh, uh, in the fabric or any kind of uh, hyperledger project, we need to create the custom wallet instead of like a uh, public blockchain provide the kind of consolidated wallet like MetaMask. So in the what projects gaps in the particular hyper community, we should have kind of such kind of project which kind of uh, simplify the 
implementation execution of the uh, blockchain projects okay yeah that i think yeah I, it's those are good points. It's hard to distill that into a project that we need, but I think those are all some high level things we need to think about as we as we produce our projects and get the demos out. Okay. Anyone else have anything they want to share on this before we move on to uh, reviewing the labs projects? So if we go to the labs, um, labs websites, let's go back down to the lab section. We initially identified um, Soleil, Perrin, business partner agent, Orion. There's a couple of fabric things that are probably going to get absorbed into fabric. Did anyone else have any favorite labs projects that they think should be on this list that we should consider approaching and discussing with them? Uh, I think fabric operate. Sorry, I didn't raise my hand. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So, fabric uh, operator or uh, HLF operator, I think, is a good uh, to be considered. I think operator is already mentioned here. So, I think there are two operators. I think there is one HLF operator, there is another fabric operator. I think these are two different labs. Fabric operator and fabric operations council. That's what it is. Okay. Yes. Uh, so I can speak to these two. So what we're trying to do with these in the fabric ecosystem is see if we can get traction. Like like you said, there's two fabric operators in the labs, and then there's also a bunch of other. Uh, fabric deployment solutions for Kubernetes. We're trying to see if one of these gets traction as kind of the operator that most of the community uses. And if so, these would probably get absorbed into the fabric uh, as, as, as fabric subprojects, like Dano mentioned. So we're trying to gauge the interest uh, of seeing if we can coalesce the ecosystem into you know one of these operators uh, along with the operations console. And we'll be talking about this also in the uh, global forum. Okay. Um, cool. So going from the top here, how about Soling? Has anyone used your, all right, let's do hands first. Tracy. Yeah, sorry. Um, so I, I did, uh, I think after our last call, went through and did some kind of ranking based on like the number of PR done, the participants, um, number of releases, that sort of thing. Um, I, I think the, the other one that jumped to the top that isn't listed yet is uh, the blockchain carbon accounting, um, which is, uh close close to the top 10 in most of these categories it, it definitely is in the peer count and the participant count um and then uh it's just outside the top 10 for the release count so that's another one that we might want to think about as we go through and uh you talk about the different labs that are out there okay To quick run through. They don't have maintainers. So, first thing they need to do is get it up to um, where is it? Remy. They don't list their maintainers. Yeah, if you check your the bugs, I filed over 100 issues on GitHub repos um, for no maintainer file. So, like right there at the top. So, it's very common. Okay. I think the labs don't have the same level 
I mean, that's part of the process of bringing a lab into an incubation is to get them up to the standards. Um, okay. Uh, Kamlish, is this about the carbon or should we spend some time on the carbon before we go to your question? Yeah, so I think uh, this carbon accounting lab is uh, really good because I'm initially a contributor and a user of this lab. And in the last two years is grown significantly. And like how the like a grid project is for the supply chain, it could be the carbon accounting or uh, tokenization. And and best thing I think it uses the all the different blockchains like fabric is there, like that, like there is a uh, uh, Besu. And currently uh, we are mentoring some projects, uh, some projects in the inter in the mentorship projects at Bevel and Cactus integration two years. So okay, so this is a nice example. It, it deploys on both chains at least. Yeah, right. Um, that's that's a really good example. Yeah. And and even the, there is multiple blockchains, not just the uh, like one. There is a there is a Gorilla, there is a there is a Mainnet, there is a uh, uh, other kind of public blockchains. Is all the supported and uh, that we tried. Okay. So uh, there's one thing, and also I was talking about the, this Fabric Token SDK is also the another layer which could be kind of sub sub project in a Fabric, I believe. Token SDK. Okay. So got maintainers. Magic numbers done. Two of those three organizations. That's good. No, so, no, 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 it's uh, Angela. It's all IBM. It's all IBM. It's all IBM. Okay. Yeah. Still, it's more than three warm bodies maintaining it, which is the critical standard for um, for incubation. Um, so whenever I see like um, a fabric only project, the critical question here is, um, is there a reason why this shouldn't just be absorbed by fabric? And I guess that'd be my first question. And it doesn't have to be, you know, it could be independent of fabric, but um, is there a reason this shouldn't be maintained as part of fabric? And that might be a, you know, part of the, the uh, rationale for why it's a separate top level project. Uh, I'll let Andrew speak more, but my uh, my first comment would be unlike the um, what we just talked about fabric operator and fabric operations console, those are definitely tied to fabric and would likely come under uh, as fabric sub projects at some point. The token SDK, it can work with other blockchains. And so that might be a reason not to do that yet, but I'll let Angela speak to that more. Yeah, in, indeed. So uh, it started as a, something for Fabric, but now, for example, we integrate already with Orion, with Hyperledger Orion, which is a centralized, uh, um, a centralized uh, blockchain system, uh, which is another lab, uh, b b b by the way, we can, that can be very interesting. Uh, and technically, we can uh, uh, we can interface other blockchains as well. So yeah, it was born as a Fabric thing, but uh, definitely can uh, it can deliver uh, zero knowledge tokens uh, uh, to move to multiple blockchains. Yeah. And for instance, we already use this in multiple uh, CDBC experimentations with uh, with central banks. Okay, so that's I mean that's the sort of rationale I'm looking for. There's a reason that's you know it's above the uh, protocol layer, and that works with Ryan. That's awesome. Um, cool. Um, so let's go back to the top of the list and go through some of these and see if anyone's had a chance to get familiar with it. So Lang. Has anyone done much, looked at Solang much, work with it, familiar with it at all? Jim? Hey, uh, Jim, yeah. Uh, I haven't used it hands-on, but I think it's an interesting project. Um, I think you, uh, Wasm is a new, new programming model. Um, Substrate uses it for customized uh, runtimes. Um, it's pretty, Pretty, pretty useful to have that um, uh, as a project in general. Okay. So you, Jim sees it. 
because one of the things I think some of these projects is time to start getting them to move up and to get feedback like this, I think would help some of them, you know, go through the process because as, as we've learned in previous examples, going through the uh, incubation process can be, it's very easy or very hard. Um, so positive feedback to this would help for some of these projects. Um, Tracy, I think you have your hand up. Yeah, so I think I brought this up the last time that we talked as a, a lab project that would be useful. And in, in that time, I had reached out to Sean and asked him to put together a project proposal, which he did. Um, but he's a little shy of submitting it without kind of uh, some feedback from the TSC as far as whether or not um, it looks like something that he, um, you know, that that would be useful to bring in as a top level project. I think, you know, he had potentially a, a poor experience the last time he attempted to bring this as a, an incubation project in the past. Uh, and so I think it's, you know, any sort of feedback or thoughts that we can give on this particular lab uh, becoming a project would probably be a useful sort of thing. I do think that it has gone through a lot of changes since the last time that uh, Sean brought it to incubation. Uh, you know, I think that there's, you can see like just the number of conversations that are happening in the Solang Discord channel. Um, you know, it's one of the, as I go through and kind of take a look at different channels, it's one of the more busy, right, um, channels that exist out there. I, I do think that there is, uh, you know, the increase of kind of um, people who are working on it, uh, people who are using it. I see that, you know, from the proposal, there was a lot of really interesting thoughts about bringing uh, different languages or different, um, even using it for different sorts of projects, right? And so, I, to me, it seems like uh, it is definitely worthwhile to. Uh, bring this forward. And so anything that we can do to help encourage Sean in that regard, I think would be great. I realized from that, that there's a, I was looking to see where this would slot into, and I think it would fit into application support in libraries. Um, I don't know if it would be uh, top level or underneath it, but I'm going to put it under application uh, support in libraries. Um, cool. Kamalash? So, uh, I not use the Solang, but I think when we see that this roadmap and uh, usability, so I think it will attract the solidated developers from the public blockchain community. And if Solang has a roadmap to support the other hyperledger projects like, uh, like maybe like Indy or maybe Sartooth or Fabric in the future, then it could, uh, help to get the other solid developer in the hyper ecosystem. So I think I support to be this project as a maybe main level project in the future. Okay, would a project have to support uh, Hyperledger um, DLT for to be included? Is that a question we should be asking them or? No, I think, being not, I think it's not necessary to support the hyper project, but at least I suppose is it's, it's a kind of sol soloing uh, solidity compiler which could be used by any other projects outside the ecosystem is also the high energy projects only. So, but I think it will fill the game and maybe attract the solidity developer out, outside there, or maybe uh, solve the issues in the currently solidity language. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Um, Peter, you raised your hand. Yes, I just wanted to express support for it as well. I am a fan of the technology stack that it uses, specifically LLVM and Rust. And I'm also a big proponent of WebAssembly in general and also building other technologies on top of it. So yeah, I definitely support it. Um, Jim, your hand came back up. Uh, yeah, so I was thinking about this project. Uh, I, it intrigued me the level of interest, uh, what, where we are with 
you know, the adoption interest from the enterprise side. I feel like this is a genuine contribution uh, to high pleasure from a, a, a natively born uh, uh, project in the web space space. And you wasn't is certainly more adopted there uh, rather than the enterprise at the moment. Um, well, and your question. Wasn't. Wasn't, okay. Um, and to a question whether a project, top level project should support at least one DLT, I don't feel like that should be a requirement. A lot of the, the things may be that um, a project is already adopted um, in Web3 in general, but hasn't been by any of the DLTs in Hyperledger, but that's a point in time thing. I feel like Wasm might be one of these. Uh, I remember Besu made an attempt, attempt to support that, uh, but walked away from it. I think maybe out of performance issues, but so there's certainly interest, but at the moment, none of the DLTs are interested in having a support for, uh, for Wasm, but that may change in the future. Okay. So to get some context on the, the Besu e Wasm, there's there's two variants of, of Wasm that's being discussed about for Ethereum, um, general Wasm and e Wasm, and there's issues with the gas calculations and making sure that it's EVM compatible. They're trying to do some changes to e Wasm. Um, early prototypes showed that interpreting um, interpreting the EVM was actually faster than what they had built for e Wasm, which was a layer above the Wasm. They're doing some very Ethereum specific things to it such as um, compiling EVM to WASM and um, the gas calculations. And it was really the 256 bit math doing it in WASM that really got them. Um, and those are, you know, that's why um, Ethereum specifically went away. But if you do things, you make smarter choices about what you're doing in your language, such as allowing um, native register with multiplication rather than requiring 256 bit, the performance goes up significantly. And if your blockchain doesn't have the gas calculation regime, um, it's a lot easier to handle. So I think you know we shouldn't view the the failures of of eWASM to reflect necessarily on WASM because what Ethereum was doing was was very very specialized and and po imposed some very very severe constraints on what WASM was capable of for that. So um, yeah, Basu did dabble in uh, the Ethereum community did dabble in it. Basu never implemented it, and um, it's it's generally speaking not happening in the Ethereum community right now, but Wasm in general, like Substrate and Cosmos, um, it's it's very strong in the, that particular sub ecosystem. Cool. Anything else that anybody wants to see on Solang, or should we move on to Perrin? Angelo. Yeah, the, there is always this. Um... This aspect that bothers me or uh, troubles me, uh, th that's uh, why one in the, for enterprise applications, uh, um, you usually desire privacy. So privacy is a concern and, uh, um, and also performance uh, is a concern. So you usually tend to not have, uh, uh, or to have as less possible execution on, on chain. And if you have, uh, if you execute anything on chain, it's, it's usually for, uh, verification of zero knowledge proofs. So I understand that for the, the, the public blockchains where nothing is, uh, everything is public, you don't, you are not concerned about privacy. Th this is a project that might be very, uh, very be in, is absolutely interesting there, but for the enterprise application, what's the benefit? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not completely sure. Maybe not all... I'm just assuming that uh, 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 enterprise application are not using uh, uh, a lot of uh, on-chain computation. If you're talking about stuff like big secrecy acts, then yeah, the, the uh, secrecy is basically required, but I think there's a lot of public uses. We're doing everything in public could be seen as, as, a, as a valuable item, part. Yeah, I was just gonna agree. I think there's a lot of enterprise interest in uh, you know using the public blockchain for certain things. And I totally agree with Angelo that things that need to, uh, Things that need to have privacy properties uh, are very, very difficult to do on the public blockchain and often require some of the solutions that uh, Angelo just described. Uh, you know, but we are 
you know, seeing enterprises use public blockchain stuff. Um, and, you know, whether you agree with that or, or not, you know, this is sort of a case of the customer being right. At least I think. Oh, that's totally fine. If they want to do that, that's, uh, that's totally fine. Because one solution, I think we touched on it last week when we were um, finishing the city H1 would be to use, and this is something I've seen in the past few weeks, um, trolling around the ecosystem is the use of, of rollups to get your privacy. Um, you know, that's basically how you do your zero knowledge proofs, except instead of a zero knowledge proof, you would have an off chain rollup. Um, those are called, um, one variant is called Plasma, which is a variant of um, the old Lightning Network. But there's also, uh, you know, layer two proofs where the data availability is not kept on the main chain, but among private people, um, between the people who only care about it. Um, so I'll go ahead and put that because there's I've heard you know solutions that that beat around. Um, the bush on that to get kind of around it, but I think it just needs to be called out that I think a, a roll-up solution would be an excellent project at Hyperledger, one we should probably solicit for. Um, I don't have any specific ones in mind. Um, all the ones I know are very Ethereum specific, but you know, there's also layer one blockchains that are enshrining their roll-up solution into it. So I think this is valuable um, to make a sub-ledger that, that anchors into another ledger um, as, 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 a, as a use case that we should consider that you know might be one to keep an eye out for Hart. yeah i agree with that uh i think a zk roll up project would be amazing and i have been actively agitating people to try to build one uh, I, I don't think it's worked but you know we'll see in the future okay um jim yeah, I don't know if uh, UI is represented on Hyperledger, but they've been working on Nightfall, which is interesting roll up. It's optimistic roll up, but with ZK payload. Um, just feel like it, it, it from its lineage, it fits, it fits in the Hyperledger space, but don't know if anybody has made a, an attempt to, to work with them. That's what I particularly always have a look at. I was. I know they were disappointed when Ethereum didn't adopt the BLS 12 precompiles, and I tried to get a um, some information from them as to what specific set of these curves they needed. That the, the Japan DevCon never got a hold of them. There was so much going on, but I agree they they have some amazing demos and some amazing stories. Um, and just the one I saw the other day on carbon accounting, um, it was all Ethereum, so that that really interested me. Um, I think was that all you had, it, Jim? Angelo, I, um, I was wondering, can we invite companies to to join uh, the hyperledger? Because, for example, uh, in this space of the the rollups, there is Starkware, who is doing really, really beautiful work and uh, with very um, with very good uh, theoretical background. Um, and they have also a language called Cairo for uh, uh, for privacy preserving uh, uh, computation. That to me seems very uh, very relevant more than other options to to be honest yeah even though this works mostly in the, in the account models but so they, they come also with limits and they will not uh, they will be a bit problematic for cdbc but uh, definitely starkware is doing a lot of good work yeah i mean that's how consensus and basic came on board to be honest um heart yeah i was gonna say if you have if you know people or projects that you think would make good members or projects, like absolutely, you know, please introduce them, please, you know, socialize the, with them. You know, I'm happy to talk to them. I think most of the staff are happy to talk to them. So yeah, like, you know, please, please talk to people, you know, remember that, you know, Hyperledger is about uh, open development. So, you know, projects that make sense are, are things that you know companies are willing to open up to outside development and and have a, a truly uh, open development process. But yes, you know, please you know socialize and and talk to people. And if you think something is appropriate, you know, tell them and and ask them. Cool. Uh, Camelish. 
Yeah, so uh, in this JetK rollup, I think recently the Polygon uh, from India actually made there one of the technology open source. So maybe uh, collaboration with them or ask them to like come under the Apache 2.0 license because they recently made the open source this JetK rollup technology. Okay. Polygon. All right, so let me get those thoughts organized a little better because there's yeah, some suggestions for uh, members to join on board. Okay. Angelo, your hands back up. Uh, yes, just for uh, for uh, for a clarification. So ZK rollups is not uh, that they are private. Uh, they are not private. So the they are it's true that they are using zero knowledge proofs to to compress essentially operations, but they are not private. They will reveal what's happening. So they will reveal the content of the account and so on and so forth. So uh, actually, the one that are that are private are called Z squared uh, rollup. Then you can uh, just just for clarification that ZK doesn't mean necessarily. Unfortunately, in the notation, doesn't mean always uh, private. ZK squared, sorry, ZK squared. Uh. To clarify, uh, Angela, you mean um, privacy in that whoever is conducting the transactions is still revealed, but the the payload, the content of the transaction is still private, right? No, not even the content of the transaction is private. So, uh, sorry, for the ZK rollup, if you take a ZK rollup, uh, they are just, uh, everything is public. It's only the aggregation that is proved uh, so that the, 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 this entity, this, uh, this mediator aggregated all the, uh, the transactions uh, in, a, in a proper way. So it's more, uh, it's this kind of, uh, you do actually don't need, for this, you don't need actually the zero knowledge proof. If you really want to hide also the content of the transaction, who did what, uh, then it's much more complex the, the the operation and usually it's called the zk squared rollups so you apply two times zk but probably okay. it's unfortunate it's unfortunate the, the the terminology because what if you talk about zero knowledge you are implicitly saying that they it's also private but uh, for what i read the literature it's not the case with simple uh, zk rollup Probably worth a different time for discussions. My understanding is uh, the entity uh, that conducts the, the, the rollups are not protected uh, unless you apply uh, any um, some anonymity, uh, like tumbling, for example. But the content itself should be should be private. But this is probably not the right forum to discuss this. Yep. I think there should probably be a table on one of our discussion days of the Hyperledger Global Forum on, on rollups. I don't know who's got that part of the program committee together. Um, in past years, they've had at the lunch area, they some days they'd set up specific tables for specific topics. So I think this would be an excellent one. Okay. So we've kind of taken a, a segue to non-labs projects that might not be on the labs list that would fill in project themes. Um, before we go back to the labs, are there any other um, non-lab, non, any other project ideas that people think that would be good for Hyperledger that we don't have in labs right now that we should specifically um, solicit for? We have the themes that fit into the themes, but if there's any specific from a theme that we are in more needed than anyone else. Okay. So I think we were at Perrin. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Anyone familiar with this lab? Angelo. I no no so then then I wanted to uh, to mention another project. Uh, that I, I think comes from consensus. Uh, it's uh, I, I think it would be a nice extension to URSA because it's a general purpose uh, a zero knowledge proof system. It's called the GNARC. It's a very a very powerful library. GNARC, G-N-A-R-K. 
Arc. Oh, Gnark. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very poor part from consensus, I think. Uh, it's a very, very powerful library for the general purpose zero knowledge proof system. So uh, but, but I, I think it would be very uh, complementary to, to URSA. Very, very good library. Okay. Um, Grace, Grace is here. Grace hears that. Grace will uh, talk with that, see if that's appropriate. So we don't have to go too far to ask. <laughs> Anything else? Cool. So Perrin, anyone familiar with Perrin? Anyone used it? It looks like mostly a two member project right now. The occasional third. Yeah. Part. Yeah, so Perun is like a recursive lightning network, uh, if that makes sense. That's probably the fastest way to describe it. OK. Way to do secure channels and use the, the blockchain to prove it, but you don't keep it on chain, you only keep it between the two partners. That would make sense. Well, the idea is that, you know, sort of if you, you can bootstrap on the trust of other people. Mm. Um, it's a very nice concept. It has like a formal academic paper and everything. That is interesting. Okay. And it does have semi regular. Yeah, that's pretty regular can do it for the number of people there. But it's interesting that no one on except for Hart on the on the TSC is terribly familiar with it. I wonder if we should ask them to do a presentation to the TSC, if that would, um, maybe that's one option we could do. Um, Angelo? Yeah, I'm, I'm also familiar. I spoke also with the, I, I not only read the paper, the, the literature, but also I spoke with the, with the, with the guys behind Perun, uh, also suggesting, recommending them to, to push more for uh, becoming a project, uh, I also find very interesting. I, I like I like it a lot. Lot the concept of virtual channels. Uh, uh, yeah, very nice. If they can get also an implementation on Fabric, that would be super cool. Okay. So I think probably the best thing there is that we need to get a Perrin. Let me write this down. Have Perrin do a presentation so we can get more familiar with it. That might be a, a prod they need to to uh, decide to become uh, incubating project. Okay, business partner agent. Hey, Gano. Um, yes. Just quickly, I, I can reach out on the, I think they have a Discord channel. I can reach out on or okay. Broom to uh, just see if they would like to set up some time with the TSC to schedule a presentation. Okay, I was writing it down, but if you're going to take the action item, definitely. Sure, I'll take it. Cool. Shredding on my notepad instead of on the screen, so that's why I didn't see anything. Aries Cloud Agent. Anyone worked with business partner agents that's not named Hart?
Uh, so I haven't worked with it per se, but I do think it has some interesting um, ideas around it. Um, I, I think there, you know, is this idea around organizational type wallets um, and how we deal with, you know, credentials that are issued to wallets or from wallets. I'm sorry, to organizations or from organization. Um, I, I will say that I also, I don't know if it was in the chat, I think it was in the Discord chat. Um, the British Columbia government also has a, a source base called Traction, uh, which I believe they're thinking about taking and bringing to Aries. And I think it is similar to business partner agent. And I would love to see those two communities work together. Um, my, my guess is that at some point this might be something that comes into Aries as a, um, you know, kind of sub project, if you will. I think Aries is made up of many different um, types of projects. And, and so I think this could be something that uh, we look at from that perspective, but I, I think it really requires um, the connection between the communities that are working on the same sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think, um, I think we're re reaching diminishing returns, but let's just finish off with Orion. Has anyone finished? So anyone work with Ryan, would they be um, a good candidate to get to propose to either present to the TSC or propose a project? Because I think that that also leads to another question is um, how often should we ask the labs to say, hey, you've done cool stuff. Do you want to share it publicly? Because um, I think that could be a good step to encourage them to continue growing, to show what they've built and get encouragement and feedback from TSC members or other projects. So um, anyone work with Ryan? Okay. They did um, do, I mean, speaking of sharing their work publicly, Orion did do a meetup recently. I can share, I can get the recording of that and drop it in the uh, TSC channel. But I mean, there is, I mean, there is interest from labs in presenting some of their work. So I've reached out to some in the past and Orion was one who was gonna raise their hand and say, yeah, I'll share what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Angela? Yeah, just, just to say that obviously I worked with Orion, it's very simple. The, the, the nice thing is very simple to set up. Very simple, very simple. compared to other blockchains, it's super fast, super fast. Okay. Kamlesh? So uh, my work about the organizing, uh, there are many such use cases where we don't need the decentralization, but uh, kind of distributed nature is required. I think Orion is filling that gap. So especially in the government uh, sector. So actually I had a call with sometime back with the Korean mentor, Orion, uh, mentor and contributor and how Orient could be the good use uh, project for the use cases in the especially in the where we need the uh, uh, we don't need the decentralization technically okay Cool. All right. Um, so uh, with 10 minutes left, I guess the ask here is, um, are there any things you need to revise before we um, push a final publish on the projects and themes or any labs or non-labs projects we want to solicit? Um, any, and do you think the task force I guess this is a request. Does anyone think that there is more for the task force to do, or can we call it a completion? Is there more work that needs to be done? Mm 
Okay. Angelo. Uh, could, could it make sense to have, uh, I don't know, a final uh, uh, feedback now that there is the, uh, the Hyperledger Global Forum uh, to take the chance there to, to ask the community about feedbacks and... Uh, That's record. an excellent place to do it. Yeah. Um, get feedback on recommendations, project... Um, Projects that yeah. they, they would like to see or something that they found useful or something that we miss as well. Okay. So I'll take that as the next step of the task force to, um, you know, make it available for Hyperledger forum people. And then depending upon the feedback we get there, um, possibly uh, putting, putting, buttoning it up and putting a lid on it. And I don't think we need to wait for the forum itself. I think mm -hmm. that outreach could happen like today or okay. this, this week. Yeah. Um... So what, would that be a, an all members email? Would that be uh, the message in Discord? What would what would that look like, Ray? Uh, I'll have to huddle. I feel like that would be an email, but we might be bombarding people with too many emails. It might get attached right. to another email. Um, let me huddle with uh, David and Karen and see what the best way forward is. I wonder if we, sh we should... Um... Yeah, I think because that is the dilemma because I think email may be better because not everyone's on Discord and Discords tend to be project skewed rather than participants who don't have a project that think it might be a gap that they're not in. Um, yeah, we we do have a Discord uh, channel or group for people that have signed up for Global Forum, but uh, there aren't that many people there because uh, I haven't taken the task to make sure that every single person who signed up has the right tag. Yeah. Okay. All right. So get get back to me on what what you think the action might be on that. Um, I could draft an email. Um, I don't think I have access to send on those lists, which is probably a good thing. Um, you want to control that. Cool. Well, if there's uh, no other discussion items. Um, Give people seven minutes back. Thank you. Thanks, yep, Dano. Thanks. Bye bye. Thanks, everybody.